Stats 2 revision video. In this video today, we're going to take a look at Chapter 1, Linear Regression. So we're starting with basically the first chapter here um, in further Stats 2. So I might not upload these in actual chronological order, um, but this is the very first chapter within further Stats 2. So let's take a look at the questions here. There's actually only two questions in this video um, because they are quite long questions um, and you get a bit more practice with this with Chapter 2 looking at correlation. So we won't mix it up too much, just two questions. They are quite long, um, but hopefully gives us a nice bit of practice. So let's take a look at them. So these are taken from S1 papers. Um, so let's just take a look at what the actual question is. So usually we've got some context. Um, so we've got a teacher looking at the a random sample of eight children from a class. Um, the length of their left foot is recorded and their height. So we're given both of these in the table and we're asked to calculate some summary um, statistics here. You're given most of them usually, and that's always um, pretty much always the case, just to save time. Uh, but you will usually have to calculate one or two of these summary statistics, and then usually calculate something like the regression line or the correlation, for example. So let's have a look at part A here. So you are given formulas to help you with this, um, and I've included these up here in the top right corner. Um, so we need to find S F H. Okay. So how would we work that? I, well, let's use this formula here, right at the bottom, the very last one here. So that's going to be equal to the sum of F and H. So I'm using this right hand side here, this final equals here. Okay, so that's the sum of FH minus the sum of F times the sum of H divided by N. So that's going to be our formula here. So the sum of FH, well, we're given that. That's given here right at the very end. So that's 25,291 minus the sum of f, which we're also given, that's 186. And the sum of h is also given, that's 1,085. Sample size, we just need to either read the question to get that or just count how many data values we've got. Um, we've got eight children, so n is eight there. Okay. Just plug all this into your calculator now you can see what you get so if you do that correctly we should get 64.75 there okay so that's um, our first summary statistic that we're going to work out part b then we're asked to work out the equation of the regression line of f i'm sorry h on f and it's going to be in the form h equals a plus bf okay we want to give the value of a and the value of b both to three significant figures so again, these are given in your formula book. I have I haven't included that here, I probably should have. Um, but I will write it down just so you've got it. So B, that's gonna be S X Y divided by S X X. Okay. Now is that's gonna be slightly different for us because we're using F and H here as our subscripts. So in our case, B is gonna be equal to F H, so S F H. And then if you're not sure what letter this would go here, use what they've given you in the formula. So it's S, X, Y. Notice the X here is first, so whatever goes first, it's also in the denominator there. That's F, F there. Okay. So S of F, H, we've worked that in part A, so that's 64.75. And then that's divided by S of F, F, which is given in the um, summary statistics uh, in the question, which is 39.5. Okay. Plug that into your calculator, and for that, we should get 1.64 there. Okay, now we have to calculate B first because we need that to calculate A. Um, so, obviously, calculate B first, then we can calculate A. So, A is given again, this formula is given in your formula book, but if I just write it down, so it's y bar, so the mean of the y values minus B times the mean of the x values here. Okay. So how do we work out the mean um, of y, the mean of x? Well, simply we'll just use in this case, let's just actually make sure we've got the right values here. So in our case, our y corresponds to h. Now this is y here. Okay, so h, so that's the mean of h, minus b times um, f there. Okay, the mean of f. So corresponding then, h bar, so that's going to be the sum of the h values. 1,085 divided by the number of samples, which is 8, our sample size. 
Then we're going to do minus b, so minus 1.64 times the mean of f in this case. So that's going to be the sum of f values, 186 divided by a sample size. And if we just put that in our calculator, we get 97.5 there. Okay, so we've got everything we need now for our regression line. So let's just write that down. So writing that down then, I get h equals a, which is 97.5 plus um, oops, what have I have 1.64 for B, in this case, F. Okay, that's the exact form that we want. H equals A plus B, F there. Okay, so that's part B done. Um, and we give everything to three significant figures. Um, so that gets us our five marks there. Part C, we're asked to use the equation to estimate the height of a child with a left foot length of 25 centimetres. So, we're going to use our regression line now to calculate part C. So let's just carry on over here. If we've got a left foot length of 25, well, that corresponds to F. So all we need to do here is sub F equals 25 into our regression line. And that will give us our estimate there. So H is equal to 97.5 plus 1.64 times 25. If you do that, put it into your calculator, what you should get here is 138. And then we just make sure we get the context correct. Um, this is the height, h centimeters, so this is 138 centimeters then. So that's two marks there for part C, nice and easy. Part D, we're asked to comment on the reliability of the estimate in C. So let's just clear all this so we can write down um, our paragraph here. So the reliability of our estimate in C. Well, <coughs> let's consider the context of the question. We're looking at the length of someone's left foot and their height. Well, we would expect that to have a positive correlation. We would expect correlation there. Um, it makes sense. The taller someone is, the more likely that you know the foot is to be bigger. So we'd say seems sensible. Seems sensible. As we would expect correlation <coughs> and the only other thing to consider here is whether our value that we're, we were using 25 centimeters is that within our set of data there um, so if we have a look our largest uh, value for f is 27 so the 25 does fall within the data set so we can make a comment on that So 25 centimeters is within our data set. The only criticism we really have here is that we have quite a small sample size. We only have a sample of eight children. So we have small n uh, so a larger sample size would be better. It gives you a better estimate. Gives us a better estimate there. Okay, so that's part D. We only need to give a couple of comments there. That seems absolutely fine. We covered pretty much all bases there. Um, so we'll call that then part D. And then for part E here, just one mark. We've told that the left foot length of the teacher is 25 centimeters. Can we give a reason why this equation B should not be used to estimate the teacher's height? We'll think about it again the context of this question. When we've done our summary statistics here um, in part A and what we were given, these were used from a sample of eight children. We then went on to calculate the equation of the regression line using the sample for the eight children. However, if we're going to use this teacher, then it's probably not going to be very accurate um, or reliable. So what I'm going to say here is that this is unreliable. So it's unreliable. <coughs> Um, because the teacher is not a child. And clearly, if you think about it, some people, um, you know, might have that foot size, but they might have been a lot taller. Um, 
So in context, it's just not going to be reliable. Um, clearly, because the teacher's not a child. Were um, our regression line. used a sample of children here. Let's just call it CN. Okay, so that's all you need to say there for one mark. Uh, nothing too much. Um, just make it clear that the teacher, it'll be unreliable essentially. Okay, so that's that question number. Quite a lot of marks for it. Um, <clears throat> but the majority of the marks coming right at the beginning here, calculating the regression line and one of the summary statistics. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at one more question then. This one involves a bit of coding, actually, so quite a good example to look at. Um, like you see, there is quite a lot of marks for this, so let's take it step by step um, for this one. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of this question, it's pretty boring. We're looking at basically temperature of um, a certain length of copper rod. We do use a bit of coding, though, so let's just make clear what we're doing here. So, where's my uh, thing from? So, let's just change this to a black pen. We know that x is equal to t, this is the coding that we use, so x is equal to t and y is equal to l minus 2460. So, what I'm going to do now is change my t and my l here. So, if we get rid of that t, we know that's x. And this l is y um, plus this value here, if that makes sense. So, l would be equal to y plus that. So, in that case, I need to subtract 2,460 off all of these, because y is L minus 2,460, whereas we just want y here. So in that case, I need to minus 2,460 off all of these. So if we do that, let's do that step by step. So that's 1.12. The next one, 1.41. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just write them all down and then I'll cross them all out as I go down. 1.73, 1.88, 2.03, and then finally 3.05. So let's just cross all these out. Okay, we want median then. So then we're our new y values then. So for part A, we need to look at um, some summary statistics here. So let's just go back to our white pen. So for part A, we need to calculate S, X, Y, and then S, X, X. Now we've got these um, given in our formula book, and we're using the actual same variables here, so nice and easily. So, like we can see to the right, that's the sum of X, Y. So, um, let's do that one first. So, sum of X, Y, what's that? Um, is that given? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it is. So it's given that there's a summary statistic. So that's 757.467. The other thing we need to do here is work out the sum of x and the sum of y. So they're not actually given to us. All you need to do is add up all these x values here, add up all these y values, and that's our sum of x and our sum of y. So if, what I'll do is I've already added them up. Um, I'll write them here so that we've got them. So the sum of x. That's equal to 337.1. So add up all your x values. And then finally, the sum of y. That's equal to 16.28. So we've got the sum of x, sum of y. What we can do now is work out um, the rest of this summary statistic. So this is the sum of x times the sum of y. So that's 337.1 times 16.28. And then we divide this by the sample size, which we're not explicitly given. Um, so if we just count the uh, values um, we've got here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we divide this by our sample size of eight. Plug this into your calculator here. And what you should get is 71.469. So that's SXY. Now well, let's calculate S, X, X. So, again, we're given the formula for this. So this is the sum of X squared, sigma X squared, minus sigma X all squared, divided by N. So we're given this here, over to the left. So that's 
0.15965.01 minus sigma x, which we worked out here, 337.1 all square divided by 8. And again, just work this out in your calculator now. This comes to 1760.459. So there we go. So that's part A, giving us 5 marks. Let's work out part B now, get ourselves another 5 marks here. We want to find the equation of the regression line of y on x. So this should be in the form y equals a plus bx, y is equal to a plus bx. So this one's nice, we don't have to do any change in here, um, like, unlike the last question. So again, the formula, so we just write out b is equal to s x y divided by s x x, which is partly why you've worked out in part a. So a bit of guidance here, um, kind of holding your hand through the question. So just using the values we worked out here, so that's 71.469 divided by uh, 1760.459. Plugs into your calculator and we should get here 0 0.041, or very, very close to that, so 0 0.041. And then A, again, is the mean of Y minus B times the mean of X. So the mean of Y, that's the sum of the Y values divided by uh, our sample size, 8. Minus B, which we've just worked out. And again, this is where we work out B first. 0 0.041 times the mean of X divided by 8. So again, calculator exercise. Plug it all in your calculator, see what you get. And here I got 0 0.324. Okay. So we've got everything we need now for our regression line. We just write it in full. So this is y equals uh, a, which is 0 0.324, plus b, which is 0 0.041x. Okay, and that's it. That's everything we need there for part b. So let's just clear all this because we've run out of room. It's quite a large question. Part c, we're now going to use our regression line here to calculate the length, or estimate the length of the rod at 40 degrees Celsius. So let's just write down the regression line again. So it's not point not four one x So, the length of the rod at 40 degrees Celsius, so in that case, we're looking for the temperature, so using x equals t, using our coding, what we're saying here is that x is equal to 40 degrees Celsius. So I need to substitute just 40 into my regression line. So therefore, y is equal to 0.324 plus 0.041 times 40. And what does this give us? Well, this gives us one point, so this y equals 1.964. Now, and clearly, if we look at the question um, and the values that we were given in our data, a length of 1.964 is clearly not correct, given that the rest are approximately 2,460. So how do we deal with that? Well, we need to use our coding again. So to get the actual value, we need to add 2,460 back to this. So plus 2,460 to this here. So. 2460 plus 1.964 and that gives us 2461.96 there if we round it appropriately. Okay, so that's our length there in millimeters. Part D, so two marks for this, so we shouldn't expect too much work. We want to find the equation of the regression line of L on T. So you don't need to go back through and start doing everything with the data again. Um, we can just use our original regression line. So we have y equals 0 0.324 plus 0 0.041x. Well, we know y is L minus 2460. And this is equal to 0 0.324 plus 0 0.041. And we know x, again, is coded such that x is equal to t. This is 0.041t. So now, if I want the equation of the regression line of L on t, we just simply need to add 
two times four and six to both sides to make it L equals. And in that case, what we get here, two times four and six day, point three two four plus not point not four one, say there. Okay, so that's part D. Part E, we want to estimate the length of the rod at 90 degrees Celsius. So in this case, pretty similar to part C, we just need to substitute T equals 90 in here. Okay, so that's all we need to do for this part. So T equals 90. So uh, this is part E. T equals 90, so if we do that, this is L equals 2460.324. Plus 0 0.041 times 90 there. Okay, and if you do that on your calculator, what you should get here for L is um, 2,464.01. Okay, so that's in meters as well. So that's our answer for pi e. And then finally for pi f, we're just asked to comment on the reliability of the estimate. So. When you're asked to comment on the reliability, one of the key things to look for is whether the value that we were using, so we were looking at 90 degrees Celsius, so we look at whether that 90 degrees Celsius was within our set of data here. Well, our largest temperature is actually 67.4 degrees, so we're quite a bit above that. So what I would say in that case is that this is unreliable. So unreliable. And the reason for that is because our 90 degrees Celsius is outside the data set. Okay, so as it's outside the data set, in that case, we'd say this is unreliable. And there we go, so that's the full question done. How many marks that was that? 18, um, 10, 13, 15, 16, yeah, 18 marks, that's quite a bit. Um, so I hope that that wasn't too bad um, and hope this video has helped. Like always, any issues, any mistakes that you spot, just leave a comment down below. Cheers.